This is great. I have a giant microphone in the screen. I feel so hemmed in here because I don't, I like to walk. <laughs> I'm a roamer when I teach, not a stander, but I think I'm going to have to stand. So hi everyone. Hola. I am Carol Halstead, your instructor. A little bit about me. Interestingly, I have a master's degree in theater. And this is the first time I've been on the Murphy stage. But it's also going to be the last time because we're moving the classroom. So I'm going to post about this. This is awkward. I wonder if I can. Guess not. Um, we are going to move to Butig Hall 110. I am teaching another class in Butig. And when I was in there yesterday, it was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They've got a lot of screens, but most helpfully, and also they've got the big, you know, it's not this. What they've done here, which is awesome for KU and the theater department is they brought in, um, they've set this up for teaching, but this is not a really, this is not a classroom. So Butig Hall 110's got all the things and, and best of all in Butig, they have, an, they have an actual IT person on staff. So when something goes wrong, um, someone is there to help. And this setup better for Zoom. Anyway, yay, I can use a mobile mic. Um, and that's all going to be super helpful. So I'm Carol Halstead. And um, I've been at KU. This is my 31st year at KU. Um, I have a journalism degree. I have a background. Before I came here, I was a magazine editor in Kansas City which is ancient now, it was so long ago, but um, I do write, I like to write, um, and I teach magazine classes, I teach magazine writing, I teach magazine publishing, I teach visual storytelling, which you're all gonna have to take with me or, or Eric Thomas. And I also teach this class sometimes, and I've taught a whole lot of other classes. So um, yeah, so, um, you can call me uh, whatever makes you comfortable. You can call me Carol. You can call me um, Professor Halstead if you'd like, or Ms. I'm not married, so no Mrs. Carryovers from high school. I'm not a Mrs. Um, anyway, so that is uh, um, that's who I am, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because I'm going to show a lecture and introduce you to the class, but. Meanwhile, I want to introduce you to your GTA. And your GTA is, come over here, Muhammad Itafak. And Muhammad's going to introduce himself. So, um, I should have downloaded this, of course. I mean, I should have opened this. Where, oh, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna let Muhammad come up and introduce himself. Is it showing? Oh yeah, slideshow, there we go. There we are. Whoops. Yeah, there we are. Awesome. All right. So uh, as Professor Carol said, uh, my name is Mohammed Ittifaq, and I am a second year PhD student in journalism school. I was born and raised in Punjab, Pakistan, which is in South Asia, not in the Middle East. So it's in South Asia between Afghanistan and India, uh, if you have heard any of these names. So I did my bachelor's in journalism and mass communication from Pakistan. And then I moved to Germany in 2014 
and I did my master's there in media and communication science uh, in the east part of Germany. And then uh, I'm, I moved to University of Maine, East Coast. And I taught there for one and a half year public speaking. And afterward, I moved here in the Midwest, University of Kansas. So it's been a very long journey for me to uh, coming from Pakistan to Germany, then East Coast to the Midwest. And mainly, uh, that's my academic portfolio. Then I, my research focus as a graduate student and as a uh, early career scholar, I do research health communication, which is, you know, becoming more important having this COVID-19 situation. And then I also do research on digital and social media. Uh, these are, I mean, have become buzzwords now, what is the difference between digital and social media? But anyway, not getting into the definition. So I mainly focus more broadly, my area is health communication, but within health communication, I focus on a vaccine misinformation. A vaccine means influenza vaccine, flu vaccines, uh, polio vaccines, and then now we have a COVID-19 vaccine and why people are reluctant or hesitant to getting vaccinated. And especially the role of social media, we all use social media, I think most of the time. And, uh, and lastly, a little bit, I also do research on digital journalism and the role of our digital networks in shaping how journalists interact with audiences online. That's my research and as to, in terms of professional experience, uh, I have worked as a journalist before, just three and a half years for the English press in Pakistan. And I am an active blogger for two uh, organizations here in the US. I still write for uh, uh, USC, University of Southern California. They have a blog on uh, public diplomacy. That was one of my favorite area a few years back, but not anymore. But I still write about that. And I also write uh, for a professional journalist, journalist uh, Society for Professional Journalists, SPJ, if you have heard the name. This is one of the largest organizations for journalists in the US. And then I also write for uh, the Educationist. That's the one of the newspapers uh, in, back in Pakistan. So that is my uh, professional experience a little bit. So to getting back to me, if you have any question for this class, I have virtual office hours on Monday and Friday between 9 to 11.30. But that does not mean that I would be just, you know, having Zoom and sitting there alone. <laughs> but that means if you have any question that we can meet during this time, or if you, if you see this time is not working for you, just send me an email and we will set up a time uh, apart from these uh, two and a half hours on Monday and Friday. And email is the best uh, way to communicate with us and for both of us. But if you have any question related to the class or assignment or syllabus or anything, feel free to send us an email. And we also provided a handout how to send an email. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes we, we get a lot of emails and we also want you to learn a little bit professionalism. So just to be follow like small etiquettes when you are sending emails, writing emails with salutations, with the names, and you can call me first name or the last name, I don't care. To be honest, call me professor, uh, GTA, whatever you want, I don't care. And uh, we will get back to you as soon as possible we can. But also if you send us an email in the middle of the night, do not expect <laughs> you know, the response immediately, but we will get back. Uh, as we wake up next day. So thank you. And I'm looking forward to be your GT. And if you have any question, I can help you in any shape or form, I would be happy. Thank, thank you. you okay, so that's great. Um, I have office hours too. I need to put Muhammad's office hours on Blackboard. My office hours are Tuesdays from three to 4.30. And it's the office hours for like, I've got three classes and I've got, you know, like a hundred and almost 200 students. So if I have to meet with people in ex at extra time, I will, but I'm super, like, I, I'm so happy, even though, even though I'm up here on the big stage, 
don't feel that you can't reach out to me and for any, you know, for any reason, just don't expect me to write you back if you email me after eight o'clock at night because I shut down so that I'm not, I don't, I, I, I try not to check my email after I quit working and eat dinner or I'll just get real like wonky and then I can't sleep. So, um, cause I get all in my, my head, it's all in the things that I got to do. So anyway, um, yeah. And so away we go. Let us see. So I'm going to start with sort of a lecture. Um, now I need you guys. Oh crap. See, I forget. I can't walk away. <sighs> Do not like being attached to a, a computer. Um, if you have not looked on Blackboard and seen how the class works, I'm just going to give you a heads up. You are going to take a quiz once a week over that week's lectures, right? That includes today. This week's quiz won't be very difficult because today's lecture doesn't have a lot of actual content in it. So it'll be mostly be more about class stuff, but Wednesday I'm going to lecture on, um, it's going to be your first kind of conceptual lecture about media and society. Your quizzes every week are going to be 10 questions and the, it's going to be worth 10 points. And so you're going to have 14 of those because I'm starting this week and they are going to go right through the last week of the semester, I think. Yeah. Um, and I will post, since we have class on Tuesday and Thursday, I will post the quiz on Thursday by noon. And then you will have until Monday night at 11.59 p.m. to take it. Um, you'll have 20 minutes. It'll be a timed quiz. So I'll set a timer on that. Of course, if you've taken good notes, you can have your notes right there in front of you. No problem. I, I don't have a problem with that. What you, uh, but what you need to know, and I'm going to say this again partway through, I have a whole script, but you know, I'm already off of it. And if you had me for 150, you know that I'm not very good with staying on script, am I? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, now my mind just wandered. Okay, I'll get to whatever that was, something about the class. Yes, yeah, so you need to take notes today. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. Um, not everybody is here who is supposed to be in this class, but you just need to know that this is an in-person class. Not, I'm not going to post every lecture on Blackboard. I will, I, I'm going to record every lecture and I'm going to put it on Blackboard, but it will, those lectures will only be made available to students who miss for a reason, other than I slept in. Um, you're sick, you're an athlete, you have to do something, you're going to email, um, you're going to email Mr. Itifak, and then he is going to give you access, he's going to give people access to the lectures. I'm doing this because I'm mean as shit. No, I'm doing this because if I started just posting all the lectures, by next week there would be three people here. But if you've ever tried to watch a Zoom lecture like this, you know, this stuff where I'm standing in front of a laptop and it, it, it's, it's not ideal. These are not lectures that are designed to be recorded. This is a big multimedia class. You're going to learn about music, movies, television. And so the experience for you is going to be much better if you're in class than if you're trying to watch this online. But again, you won't be able to watch it unless you miss for a really good reason. I will post today's lecture because so many people seem to be missing. Although if you've trickled in because, but I'm going to make it very clear that today's the only day I'm going to do that. And, you know, this is being recorded in zoom. So you know how great, you know, you know how great that is. Right. Okay. So why, why am I not screen sharing? Hmm. 
I need this. Here we go. I'm sorry, I'm starting this with that. Tastes like strawberries on a summer evening. And it sounds just like a song. I want more berries and that summer feeling. It's so wonderful and warm. Breathe me in. Breathe me out. I don't know if I could ever go down. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know if I could ever right, go down. Right. What a new sugar high. 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 What a new sugar song. Okay, I would really like to watch that whole thing because I love it. How many people like this song? No, you hate it. <laughs> I love it. I love Harry Styles. What a badass. Like, he just is himself. What a, thing, what a, what a great thing to be. What a great thing to figure out you, you can do and be. But he's also very rich. Okay. And... Here's another.
I really hate to stop songs. How many of you guys know this song? Right? How many people like this song? Eh, this was actually at the top of the music charts last week. So very popular. Or I might have gotten that wrong. Or maybe it was one of the top songs of last. No, I think it was at the top. It was at the top of Billboard's music chart. Um, which you can find online. I really love doing this first part of this lecture because I get to do all this research and find out what everybody's watching and listening to right now. It's kind of interesting, so full of some surprises. So <clears throat> you use media. Oh crap, see, I'm walking away. <clears throat> you use media every day, right? All the time, every day, all day long. Name some forms of media that you use every day. Somebody, just shout out, yeah. Snapchat. Snapchat, right, what else? Yes, what? Group me. Okay, what other forms of media are you using or consuming every day? Yes, I'm sorry, what? YouTube, yeah. How else? How do you get your news? What? You guys are going to have to learn to shout out in your big theater. I have a mask on voice. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. I don't tweet. I look. I'm a looky. I'm a, I'm a looker, but not a tweeter. I started out thinking I would tweet, but, you know, limited bandwidth. It's like, well, do I really want to get in, do that, and have to be this person who has this presence, and do we really care? So, yeah. Okay, so we get our news on Twitter, right? which is interesting because it used to be people got their news in newspapers. And so you went to a news source and looked at news, but now news comes at us from all these different directions. So much more diverse sources of news, I think, that people get than they used to. Uh, what other media? Movies, right? Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus. Where would we be in this pandemic without streaming, right? Um, yeah, so you consume media all the time, every day, so much so that we don't necessarily, uh, you know, we kind of take it for granted. So what else is tops today? So according to Nielsen, this was amazing to me, the top network show is NCIS. How many of you guys watch these, like, you know, these crime? Yeah, look, not a lot of you. And yet, it's the most popular, according to Nielsen. Now, uh, Nielsen only measures things that people get on TV. It's not measuring, it can't count views. Niel what Nielsen is, it's, it's a service that shows how popular shows are, right? And, uh, but it's only able to count views of people who are watching on TV. It can't count views of people, of people who are watching things on their phones or on tablets or computers. However, this show and this franchise, NCIS, it's been on since like, I mean, it, this thing is like, I don't know, it's been going since the 90s, all these, that, that crime show franchise. So very popular. Um, the other thing is Hannity, which is like Fox News, cable, that's super, that's at the top of the Nielsen charts. Um, but here, this is at the top of like the number one, this is the, okay, I'm going to ask you, what do you think would be the number one streaming show right now? It, not necessarily any, not a movie, but a series. Yes. Which one? That's not the one I'm going to play for you. It's not the most popular, but yeah, I bet that is popular. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> We're going to watch this amazing scene from The Office. This is what we do in this oh. one. So, assessing the situation, mm -hmm. are they breathing? No, Rose, they are not breathing. <laughs> and they have no arms or legs. No, that's not part of it. Where are they? You know what? If we come across somebody with no arms or legs, do we bother resuscitating them? I mean, what kind of 
quality of life do we have there? I would want to live with no legs. How about no arms? No arms or legs is basically how you exist right now, Kevin. You don't do anything. All right, well, let's get back to it because you're losing them. Okay, too fast. Everyone, we need to pump at a pace of 100 beats per minute. Okay, that's uh, hard to keep track. How many is that per hour? How's that gonna help you? I will divide and then count to it. Right. Okay, well, a good trick is to pump to the tune of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Do you know that song? Yes, yes, I do. I love that song. <clears throat> First I was afraid, I was petrified. No, it's up, 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 staying alive, okay, staying alive. You were in the parking lot earlier. That's how I know you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, staying alive, staying alive. Uh, 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 stay alive, stay alive. Uh, you uh, can't tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Words is wild, women more been kicked around since I was born. Well, it's all right, it's okay. You can look the other way. Let it go, okay. let it go. Okay. 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 Stay alive, stay alive. Yeah. Okay, you didn't maintain 100 beats per minute. And the ambulance didn't arrive because nobody called 911. So you lost him. Okay, he's dead. Anyone know what we do next? Anybody? Rose? I have no idea. Anyone else? We bury him. Wrong. And check for an organ donor card. If he has one, we only have minutes to harvest. He has no wallet, I check. He is an organ donor. He is. Yeah. Give me some ice in a styrofoam bucket. Here we go. We searched the organs. Where's the heart? Precious heart. I'm not feeling well. I need to sit on. Shall we take Are you okay? No! Oh my why God, Betty! Oh, oh my why? God! Can you tell me why you had to cut the face off the dummy? <laughs> I didn't think it was very realistic in the movie. And it turns out it's pretty realistic. We had to pay for it. it Cost us thirty-five hundred dollars. Five thousand three hundred dollars for a dummy. Wow. Well, okay. Look. David, this is why we have training. We start with the dummy and we learn from our mistakes. And now Dwight knows not to cut the face off of a real person. <laughs> okay. Well, I just got an email <laughs> or text from someone at the school. Wait, no, let me turn this off. Um, I guess the reason there aren't people here, a lot of people here, is because they already got the notification about Butig and they're at Butig. <laughs> so I guess like half the class is in Butig, wondering why there's no class there. Did you guys get notified already? No? I don't know, that's strange. So um, definitely recording this lecture today, but know that on Thursday we will all be in Butig. I had hoped that you guys wouldn't be notified before class today. Let me double check and see what's happening. Ah, oh well, it is what it is. This is this is how things work now. Now this is how things work all the time. Things just don't go the way you think they're gonna go. We're not in here again after today, right? It's going to be a better room. For one thing, I'll have a mobile mic. So even though I won't be on camera, at least I can walk around and talk and be recorded. Okay. So I got distracted and I couldn't even watch that scene, which I love so much. How many of you guys watch The Office? And what was it before The Office that had a huge surge in popularity? Um, yeah. I watched Community, but I but there was a point at which it was like, yeah, I was kind of done with it. I didn't make it through the end. Uh, what else? Friends. Are you kidding me? I rewatched the whole thing. Like I just basically binged the whole thing again, and it held up pretty well since the 90s. All right. Um, yeah, so the number one original series that's been streamed. I bet you won't be expecting this one, Ozark. I thought it would be like Tiger King. 
Tiger King is farther down on the list. I also couldn't finish Tiger King because it just made me so mad. It was just too, don't confuse Tiger King with real documentary journalism, <laughs> with documentary journalism. Um, yeah, and as soon as I thought, oh man, they're abusing animals. And then you couldn't believe, I mean, this, you know, it's the shock value, right? Like they're putting, people are photographing, yeah, sit with your child and a big lion or a big tiger and we'll, and we'll <clears throat> take your pictures together. Top movie, Frozen 2. Is that surprising? One of the things I read recently about media is that in, in terms of like entertainment media is that um, people really during the pandemic seem to be going for comfort, comfort food, you know, not things that are too challenging. Um, I just finished a series though on Amazon called Fortitude and it was really challenging. It's like for me right now, it's like I either want comfort food or give me like horror and mayhem that's like way off the charts from what we're experiencing so i don't there's no in there, there's no in between for me <laughs> so yeah frozen um most watched movie video game fans this is the top game right now Anybody play video games? Is this a surprise? Oh, right, of course you do. Is this a surprise to you? I mean, I just Googled it, you know? So what do I know? I, you know, it, it's a little hard to find sources that give you the top thing, but according, I can't remember, I should have written down the source on this, but according to whatever source I went to, this was the top game, which is like, I don't know. I don't, I don't play video games. I mean, if I did, I would be more like something cut warm and fuzzy, not something where people are being killed. Yes. I don't know. Why don't, you know what? You got, you got, somebody's got Google there. Why don't you try to find out and see if I got this wrong? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't go off sales. It's, real, it's, a real, it's a real treasure hunt figuring out how to Google to find, uh, maybe this is the newest one to drop. Yeah. I cannot be relied upon. Oh, this is according to Metacritic. January 20th. Yeah, a rating. Yeah, Metacritic you know, sort of meta rates, right? It, um, okay, so uh, books. Maybe you're into books. People are still into books. And in fact, people still prefer to read books and they hold in their hands and not, um, not ones that they're reading on Kindles or tablets. How many book readers out? Anybody read out there, read just for pleasure? Boy, books are, I, I'm impressed that you guys are doing that because here's the thing, it's pretty hard uh, when you're in school to fit a book in there, you know? But I find books really sustain me. I'm always reading a novel or something and um, I find that I actually now get a little, maybe this is pandemic, but I get a little panicky if I'm about to finish something and I don't have something right on, you know, right on deck for me to start reading. Um, so book readers. And in fact, Gen X, big book readers, you guys are, which might surprise you. I don't know. Here are the two most popular books. Um, these are the best sellers or, you know, top five right now. Oh, this is last year. Most popular books of 2020, most read. Barack Obama. I've heard this book is great. Has anybody read it? I haven't read it yet. 
want to. Somebody told me it's really great to listen to. I don't li do books on tape, but he reads his own book. So, you know, that would be fun. And then where the crawdads sing. Who read this book? Anybody? Don't read it. It's terrible. <laughs> I thought it was, it was a, it was a uh, um, Reese Witherspoon pick and very popular on Goodreads. But unfortunately, um, written like a person who's writing their first novel, some interesting stuff about bayous and the flora and fauna of, um, I believe it's Mississippi ocean, but not very well written, but, but, but an interesting read. Okay. Magazines. How many of y'all read a magazine? Anybody? People just don't read magazines anymore. Although, according to research, Gen X actually reads print magazines quite a lot. Now, I come from a magazine background. And I'm, I edited a magazine that was for um, people who run floral shops and supermarkets. Doesn't that sound so sexy? Wouldn't you see that on the newsstand? But honestly, I worked for a company that did magazines for agriculture and retailing uh, of fruits and vegetables and flowers. Um, this is a category of magazine called a business to business magazine. So, and there are bajillions of them. There are more of them than there are the kinds of magazines that you see on the newsstand. And these magazines are um, for people and businesses, right? So there's one for everything. I mean, like there's a magazine for people who work in wastewater treatment, believe it or not. And I, had a, I started a magazine for this company. I came right out of college, they hired me. And because I was working for, um, I was editing a little magazine for people who, about food service and fresh produce, how to use it. And, you know, it was great. I got to travel, you know, I'm 24 years old and I'm driving a car in LA to go to a, uh, that was terrifying, but to go to a produce market or, um, you know, they grow, they grow fruits and vegetables in lots of really nice places, fun places to go. Anyway, so I edited this magazine and then they asked me if I would start this magazine for supermarkets. And here was its dead sexy name, Supermarket Floral. But I'm a person who believes that you should name magazines what they are so people don't have to figure out what the magazine is, unless you're Glamour or Vogue, you know. But those are old magazines. Vogue has been around since the 1920s, late 1920s or 1930. So, um, yeah, so I edited this magazine and, uh, and for a good long time, and really until about 2008, you saw lots of magazines on the newsstand, right? And now not so much. I mean, I'm so sad that we don't have Barnes, we don't have a, a Borders or a books, big bookstore in Lawrence anymore. There's no place to go see magazines because magazines are works of art. Really, each magazine, not people, not life and style, not the crap you see at the end cap of the grocery store where they're literally making stories up about celebrities. But there's a lot of really wonderful magazines. If you at the grocery store and you just take a minute, a few minutes to walk back and look at some of the magazines, you will see what I mean. But anyway, before I get too far gone on magazines, because I have such magazine love, magazines are popular. AARP, which is a magazine you definitely wouldn't be reading, it's for uh, retired people. So your parents may be getting it because you're not really retired. They start sending you, please, to well, not to subscribe when you turn 49. They start bugging you. Um, but there is, a, AARP is a big association that lobbies. It has a lot of lobbying power. And if you join AARP, the Association for the Advancement of Retired People, you get this magazine. And, you know, they're trying to make aging look sexy or I don't know. Um, but 
it's the largest circulation magazine in America. It has 23 and a half million readers. Now think about that compared to any newspaper or any, anything else, 23 and a half million readers. Now these people are subscribers to AARP, or I'm sorry, they're members of AARP, and ARP really wants people to join because the more people who join, the stronger their lobbying power is, okay? Then we have People Magazine, and this is the most recent cover, and I love this because it's this picture of the queen. This is not likely the cover that would attract a lot of maybe younger readers. However, how many of you watch the queen on Netflix? Anybody? Yeah, so it's not so much in your, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's not going to be your jam. Um, but this is like what the Queen is really about. And then Sports Illustrated, a fantastic magazine um, if you're into sports journalism. Good features, also ESPN. And they do this Sports Person of the Year. And last year, they actually had a number of different people. They had alternate covers, but of course, um, we had LeBron James. On the cover. Pops and social media. Who are these people? Who's this person? Let's hear it. Who? Right, Cristiano Ronaldo, you all know who he is, right? He, this guy is mad. He's not my thing. He's mad popular though. He has a, oh gosh, I should have written down how many, somebody look at Instagram and tell me how many followers he has. See, I like it when you guys add to my research. And who's this? Anybody know who this is? Selena, that's right. These are the top three social media and it might also be Facebook. And then we have Ariana Grande, but I'm interested in knowing how um, it's inter I love to Google all kinds of things like this, like who has the most followers on Instagram? I don't know. What? Cristiana? Yeah, Cristiana Ronaldo, 259 million followers. Oh my gosh, that's insane. I have a thousand <laughs> followers on Instagram, maybe a little more, 1100. I'm a long way from 259,000. Please all start, I'm kidding. I was gonna say, please all start following me so I can get my numbers up closer to his. <laughs> Hispanics, what are they into right now? What is, hi you guys, I am so sorry. I did not think that you guys would get notified of the classroom change before class. And I'm very surprised that you did because this just got finalized this morning and the people who are here apparently did not get that message. So super sorry um, about, this, about this hassle, but know that we are only meeting in here today. We're gonna, after today, we will be in Butig 110 for the rest of the semester, okay? I have, I'm recording today's lecture in Zoom and I will post it for, so you guys can see what you missed. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real sorry about that because that was not really supposed to happen. Okay, let's uh, go along here. This is, a, this is a, the number one show. Well, as, apart from football, um, soccer, this is the most popular show that um, Latina are watching, right? Latin. <laughs> I love this, uh, their expressions. <laughs> okay, so it's a soap opera. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know where it's made. I think it's, uh, oh, Mexican. Yep, it's a Mexican telenovela, which is their version of a soap opera. It's extremely popular. Uh, with Latinos. Vencer el Desamor. Okay. 
And African Americans, um, I looked this up and it's uh, uh, NFL is number one. Um, also, an, like NFL post game show, but this is also very popular. Welcome back, Celebrity Family Feud, everybody. The Whitaker Family, 92. The Mad High Family, 68. Give me Noah. Give me Emily. <laughs> That's not the single one, Emily. <laughs> okay. I love Family Feud. Um, oh, and by the way, African American consumers continue to lead the consumption of content across all platforms, according to a 20, 2019 Nielsen study. Merriam-Webster, I didn't make a slide for this. You can look up what's the top word. What do you think the top word in Merriam-Webster is for 2020? Pandemic. And you know what the word was the year before that? They, the word they, which is awesome, right? Because we're using they now um, as a gender neutral, even single pronoun. So we're not specifying gender, which is great. Um, it's been, if you're in journalism or an editor, that's kind of having to use he or figuring out what pronouns to use or trying to make it plural has been a huge pain in the butt for many, many years. Back when I was a magazine editor, it was a huge problem because most, most florists are women. And um, so I would alternate between she and he, but then I was using she in a story. And then a male florist emailed me and said, sort of like, well, how dare you assume that all florists are women? So problems, a problem. So using they does make uh, life easier for writers, although it can also be sort of weird sometimes to the ear. It can be a little awkward, but it's better it's to have this gender neutral pronoun. Um, but the top search, among the top searches according to 2020 Google Trends, I love, I, I, I wish I had a slide with all of them. I encourage you to Google top searches for 2020 Google Trends so you can see the full list because it's great what people were searching. Um, one of the tops, well, these are all the tops in different categories. This was among the top searches in 2020, how to give a man a haircut at home. <laughs> I thought this was amazing, right? And I, I really love this image. Um, other ones, election results. Obviously, top search, Joe Biden, Tom Hanks, interesting, Newman, um, Ryan Newman, he's a U.S. race car driver, Elon Musk, baby, Kobe Bryant, where's my stimulus money, Tiger King, why were chainsaws invented? It's a top search. That's a trip. How to donate to BLM. <clears throat> How to make hand sanitizer. And number three, they have a search of like where is, like the most searched where is thing, questions. Number three was where is Kansas City? That must be because of the Chiefs. I just thought that was amazing. The most liked photo on Instagram. Does anyone know what it is? Yes. It's that egg. Hey, and I like your big loud voice from back there. Well, well done. Yep, it's this one. 54,860 likes. That's just nuts. 
but it was all part of a scam, right? I mean, not a scam. I mean, they were trying to get the most likes. That was the point, right? Okay, so welcome to 101. Um, this is a class in which we will talk about media, all kinds of media, and as we've been doing already, and also theory, also uh, what news is, how to know if news is legit, um, First Amendment rights, so. Some myths related to this class perhaps or university ones, grades are just given. They are not, you have to earn them. You cannot charm me into giving you a higher grade. In fact, they don't round up at the end. Uh, I'll, I'll talk more about grades in a second and that this is just more high school. It is a 100 level class, I keep that in mind. But um, I don't have, a, well, not, I'm getting ahead of myself. I have one book for you to read and not a textbook. And I'll tell you why I don't have a textbook because I think the bloody media books that is like every sentence is like in a 1925, this happened in the 1920s. I, I'm not gonna make you read that. Like I can barely stand to read it myself, but you will read this book. Has anybody read it already? Okay, this book, she said, is gonna make your head explode. <laughs> It is a nonfiction book written by Jody Cantor and Megan Tuohy. They were the two reporters at the New York Times who broke the Harvey Weinstein story, which led to the Me Too movement. And this is basically, a, it, it reads like a novel. It's just like this page turning book that's a kind of a mystery and how did they do it, right? How did they get all those people to go on the record? And I want you to read it because while I'm not having you read a textbook, and we don't spend a lot of time talking about news, I want you to understand what journalists do when they're investigators at a high level. What does it mean to be an investigative journalist? Because you're gonna take some basic writing and reporting classes in here. How many of you are gonna be journalism majors, right? So some of you are uh, gonna go to st into strategic communications, which we'll be talking about this semester and what that is. And some of you are gonna be going news information. In other words, you wanna write the stories that go in the newspapers and to go on news sites online. So this book, I think, is the kind of book that makes you understand. And all of you who are journalism majors are gonna take 304, which is a basic writing and reporting class. Well, 304, I mean, you're doing sto stories where you have three sources, right? So <laughs> this helps you to understand what you can do. It's sort of like Watergate, which predates you guys, you know, probably predates your parents practically. But Watergate, you know, which was a huge, which got, the, which got Nixon impeached. I mean, that came down to Washington Post reporters. Or maybe you've seen the movie Spotlight, right? Which is an amazing film about at the Boston Globe, about them, about reporters at the, I highly recommend this film, by the way, if you haven't seen it and want something great to watch, because it's such a good movie. But it's about how these reporters at the, Wash, at the Boston Globe broke the, the priest um, sex abuse scandal. And so great investigative journalism is like, it's like what detectives do, right? but you have to corroborate everything. You've got to get people to go on the record. You've, it, 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 so this is a really good book. I want to say it's around 300 pages. And what you're going to do is, I'm not going to lecture on it. You're going to read it. And in the middle of the semester, I have the deadlines here coming up. You're going to, two weeks in a row, you're going to write blog posts on it. Um, and it's essentially gonna be a reflection. I'm gonna ask you to tell me what you've learned about journalism from this book. So, um, you know, the, 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 there'll be a sort of rubric. We're not, you know, what I want you to do is be thoughtful. So, you know, I would read it and at the mind blowing moments, take notes, you know, so that you can kind of keep track, but get this book and start reading it. Um, because you know that these, these posts are coming and I wouldn't wait until the week it's due to start reading this book. 
but I think once you start reading it, you're really going to like it and you're going to want to keep reading it. Yes. Well, the blog posts are due um, March 25th and April 1st. So I would get the book soon and I would have the whole book read. Now, I guess, you know, if you want to be that person, you could read half the book and you could still do the blog post. And I won't know, right? You could skim the book, but it's a good book. It's a really good book. So yeah, if you want to take a shortcut, you're not going to have a way to know that you took that shortcut. I mean, if you take a big shortcut, we're going to know because you're because your blog post isn't going to be very insightful. We're going to be looking for some insights and self-reflection. I haven't written the prompts yet, but I will. So I've, I have to write those assignments. Okay. But I'm not going to ask you specific questions, just like who was the first person to go on the record. Although you're going to know from reading the book who that was, they finally got to go first. And once they got somebody to go first, then a lot of other people did. But women were very afraid to go, to go, um, to go on the record. So, um, I mean, Harvey Weinstein was a sexual predator, who will die in prison, unfortunately, probably too soon to get the justice he deserves. <laughs> That's how I feel about him. Um, yeah. So I would get the book, and you know. I mean, I guess how, if you want to try to skim it and, or, you know, go online and look stuff up, I, I, there's nothing to stop you from that, but it's a great book. Okay. Okay. So that's the book. And the assignments. If you look at the syllabus on Blackboard, and I hope at the end I can go to the Blackboard site real quick and show you around. But it's pretty, it, the Blackboard site's easy to follow. I have everything, right now I have a schedule in there that goes week to week. And I will upload some readings as the semester progresses that you'll have to read. And then um, I'll put each week, I will put a link for the quiz. So you should be able to go to each week and find the things you need. Now I should tell you though, the schedule is not set in stone because I'm bringing in some guests to speak to do some of these lectures and I haven't been able, you know, things can change. I haven't been able to get everybody pinned down. So what you need to know is if you go through that schedule and you probably won't be looking that far ahead, but expect me to have to move some things around. Okay. So what you're going to do is each week I'm lecturing. That is the that is the bulk. You being here and listening and taking good notes is the bulk of your coursework. And then every week I'm going to you're going to take a quiz on Blackboard. All right? It'll be multiple choice or true false. Those quizzes I will be posting at Thursday. Thursdays by noon after this lecture, you have until Monday at 11.59 p.m. to take it. If you do not get it done by 11.59 p.m., you'll lose 10 points. Now, if you're sick or have an extended illness or something, we'll work with you. But if you just forget or wait to the last minute and you don't get it taken, you're losing 10 points. So it behooves you, a word that I love so much, behooves. It behooves you to be present and to take decent notes and, and, then do, and then take do well on the quizzes. I probably will have some extra credit in here, but I don't have it established right now, okay? To try to help you make up for points you might lose on the quizzes. You're gonna be frustrated because some of them are, they're gonna seem a little bit like, you might be frustrated at first, but you, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Um, the thing about the quizzes is, you know, I don't just take things from the slides. You have, this is the thing about note taking. Good note taking means you have to listen to the things I'm saying because my, I don't put a lot of information on my slides and I do that intentionally because I want you to learn to listen. Back when I was back in my day when I was in school, 
long time ago. Um, we didn't have PowerPoints. <laughs> All we had was a teacher talking in a classroom and then writing things on the board. So we were very good note takers, right? Like most good speakers and good lecturers speak from an outline. The slide provides the outline of what I'm talking about, but you have to listen to what I'm saying beyond what you just, beyond what you see on that slide, because if you don't, you're not going to do well. Okay. Um, yeah, so you have to be present and listen. And you can always stop me if you feel like you missed something. Please throw that hand up because somebody else has probably missed something too. Okay. Now I use a script and I, my test questions will come generally from my script, but they will always come from my script. Okay, so there's 10 points each for these quizzes. That's 140 points. Then you're going to do these two blog posts related to the book. And those are going to be worth, I forgot to put the points on here, but they're 25 points each. And then you're also going to do a Spark project, Adobe Spark. You're going to go make an Adobe Spark page. I have that assignment written and I will get it uploaded. The Spark project will be that you will um, create a page that's related to a concept or theory in a lecture. So you're using your Spark page to illustrate a point from a lecture. And I know that seems wide open, but it kind of is. The only thing you can't do is like, for example, I'm going to give you a lecture on photography and photo history, well then you can't just post some great pictures of yourself or a trip you took and say this is photography. That doesn't work. You have to talk about, you have to relate it, relate it to the lecture, relate it to the content. So just kind of be thinking and percolating and listening for that. It's worth 25 points. You'll write around 300 words, three or 400 words. You have to have at least one image that you post. So if you follow all the instructions and do it correctly, you're going to get the points. We're not going to slice and dice and say the writing isn't very good, although I will take off points if it, you will not get points if it's not related to, um, if you don't relate it conceptually to what's going on in class, all right? Then there's this thing called pre and post tests. KU, um, because this is a core class, the KU core wants us to assess your knowledge now and then assess it at the end. So you're going to do these pre and post tests. It's, they're just a few questions. There are no right or wrong answers. These are not graded at all. These are just a measure. So you will do this measure and then you will get 10 points for each one. So essentially you do it, you get 10 points. I do not have the pretest set up yet. Um, I've contacted somebody um, in assessment to help me, but they're slammed. So it'll get done soon and I'll let you know when that pretest is available. It's not even, it's like 10 questions. Okay. What happened there? Did I just snooze? Huh. I'm tapping on this. That is not going to do anything at all. Well, that is really weird. This is why it'll be great to be in Butig 110 because then someone could come running and help me figure this out. That just stopped. Yeah, but it's the screen that went back. Projector's still on. Hey. Well, okay, so we don't have a screen, but it's okay because I'm a professional. So you just won't have slides, but I'm gonna tell you the rest of what we have to know because we've only got a few minutes left. Um, I can't show you Blackboard, 
But you guys will all get on there and look around. Let me know if you have questions. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, um, attendance. Okay, this is super important, and I'm sorry you can't see this slide, but I've also got it on, on Blackboard. But this is, I said it at the beginning of the class, I'm gonna say it again. I'm not taking attendance, obviously. No real good way to do that with COVID and quarantining. But you have to attend class. This is an in-person class. This is not a class in which I'm gonna record. I am gonna record all the lectures, but I'm not gonna make them available to everyone. I'm only gonna make them available to students who've had to miss because they, they're sick or they, you know, they've got something going on that's a, a legit reason to be missing class. And then you write Mr. Itafak, and Mr. Itafak will give you access to the lectures. So I record them, I put them on Blackboard, and then you'll be given access. Because I know what will happen, and you know what will happen, because I would do the same damn thing. Like if I knew that like this was gonna be posted, I would just would sleep in, right, and watch it later. But it is not engaging to, to watch lectures that way. It sucks to see a recorded lecture. Like, you know, right now I don't even, apparently I'm on, I guess I'll um, stop sharing. Yeah, so what people are going to see is my face all up in front of this microphone. Woohoo, it's, you know. So, uh, yeah, so you just have to know that you need to be in class. If you need to take the class remotely, we have another section that is remote and it's everything's online. Personally, I like doing it this way because it's way more engaging. No matter how hard we try or how great we might be, you just, and especially in a larger class, I can't even see everybody. At least now I can see you, even though you all look like bandits. Benditos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, attendance. Oh, if any athletes are in here, you're gonna have to, uh, Usually we get a schedule. I think I got one so far, but you're going to have to remind us. So if you miss because you have an event, please email Mr. Itafak and he will give you access to the lectures. And if something happens and you know, you're know you set, you're really sick or whatever, we'll, I, I can give you later access to the quiz. You can watch the lectures so that you don't, don't freak out that you know, you're sick and now you've got to watch these lectures and get this quiz done by 1159. Um, I, we can, I can give ac access later. Also, if you're a person who has accommodations through the Academic Achievement Center, like for more time on a test, you need to email me so that I can set a timer for you that's longer, that's twice as long as the timer everybody else has. So make sure that I hear from AAAC. You can't just email me. I need the paperwork on that, and then I'll give you more time. No problem. Okay? All right. Um, whoops, that is mostly it. Don't cheat. I had a slide about that. Don't cheat. So yeah, so when it comes to the book and the blog post, see, because I don't have that mindset <laughs> at all, like I've got, I'll read the whole book. And it just realized, you made me realize, oh, people could probably go online and get enough to, almost enough to be able to write um, a blog post. So, you know, I guess, you know, at some point you're invested in your own learning and you're interested in stuff or you're not. And I can't help you if you're not, you know? But life's more interesting if you invest yourself in stuff, even if we have to do it this way, okay? So uh, what questions do you have? Any questions besides the one like, why didn't we know that we were supposed to still be in here today? I really just found out about this before class. How did you guys, did you get an email saying the classroom had been changed? Ah, uh, so what happened was as soon as that change was made, they changed it in enroll and pay. And if you were looking this morning to see where class was, 
you went there. Really sorry. I really didn't know that that would show up and enroll and pay that quick. But we're all straightened out now. I will post this lecture so that you can see the first part of it. Okay. Is anybody? Yes. Yeah, I'll put it on Blackboard. And it's also an enroll and pay now. Butig. Do you guys know where Butig is? How many of you are freshmen? Okay, that this is your second semester. So you kind of know where things are. Butig Hall is on the boulevard, about halfway down, kind of kind of across from Strong Hall. Interesting story about Butig, interesting history of Butig, is it used to be called Hoke Auditorium. It's old. I didn't know when it was built. It was one of the earliest buildings. And um, it used to be where the basketball team played. I think like back in Fog Island days, that's where they played basketball. They had a big theater, they had a basketball court in there. And then, and it's been since I've been here, but I can't remember what year, it was struck by lightning and it burned out the inside. And so they had to redo it and they got a huge amount of um, funding and uh, it became Butig Hall, who was a former chancellor. And um, it's really nice, really sweet, sweet building. And also because of that, there are now lightning rods on the top of all the buildings on campus. We are on a hill, right? I have been here during tornado warnings when everybody just walked outside like we do in Kansas to see where the tornado was. And then they had to put signs up in every building that said, go to shelter. So, cause if anybody got blown away, I actually, I'll end on this. Um, interesting, true story. Uh, I, we had a, a, the big tornado that went through south of town like two years ago. Was anybody remember that? There was a big tornado that went through south, right? And I don't have a basement at home and for some odd, and I live like a mile from my office. And for some reason I was just like, I'm going to go like an idiot. I'm not, it was pouring down rain. So I thought I'll drive up to school to Stauffer Flint and I'll go in the basement there because then I don't have to like run across the street to the neighbors and get super wet. Something felt dangerous about having to run that distance. So I go up to school, I get in Stauffer Flint Hall, which is an amazing building, by the way, we've just remodeled it as well. And I'm looking out the window and I can see the tornado south. I can see it. it, it's in a cloud. So you can't really see the tornado, but what you see is this super wide mass moving. So I stood there and I videotaped it. And then I went to the basement because I could see where it was. I could see it wasn't coming at me. And my video went viral. <laughs> it was amazing. It wasn't even a great video, but it was crazy how much attention it got. I think it got something like 30,000 views on Facebook. Never have, oh, and then what was, I had it on Instagram. What was amazing was almost instantly Buzzfeed contacted me. It's like, they just have people who are sitting there looking for the next viral video that they can buy from you and license and then give you kickbacks. But another company got to me before Buzzfeed and I made, I mean, I didn't make a lot of money. I made like a thousand bucks from a viral video. That is probably the first and last time that will happen. Okay, good to see you all. Have a good day. Um, and Thursday, I will see you in Butig Hall, 110. 110.